Like this? Yep. So earlier this year, my son and I wanted to build a swing in the yard, and we had the same questions most people have. Uh, one, what size to cut the board, what wood to use, what rope to get, and what tree to pick. So here's the swing we made. And a good size, I found, is 18 by 8. You could go a little wider, but 18 by 8 seems to work. Uh, an adult can sit on it, a kid can sit on it, everybody's able to fit on this size. So an inch and a half and cut the holes, uh, three quarter inch holes, and I rounded the edges so the rope won't have any pinch points and get worn. So the rope's holding up nicely on the rounded edges. Now as far as wood to use, I had a ton of scrap wood. I could have done two options. One is I could have used a piece of 2x8 or 2x10 pine, and that's a soft wood, but it's pretty thick. Um, and I could have just used that, cut it to length, drilled a couple holes, been done. But what I decided to do was make it a little bit thicker, and I glued together two pieces of plywood. And it made it about an inch and a half thick, plenty strong. There's no bend at all. A pine, you know, a piece of pine would have been fine too. I think even one piece of reasonably good plywood would have worked too. But I decided to double up and glue it together. Another option would have been, if you don't want it thick the whole way, you could just put a, uh, a strip of wood right under where the rope meets and that would strengthen it at the end. But I, I decided to just make the whole thing nice and wide. Now as far as rope, I just went on Amazon and bought some 300 pound breaking strength rope. It's 7 16 inch and it's uh, braided. It's worked fine. And you could use wood glue or you could even use liquid nails, construction adhesive since it's going to be outside. And speaking of being outside, you need to treat this. I put five coats of polyurethane on this. Um, and I can even see that it's getting a little bit worn on the top. But you're going to definitely need something to protect it from the rain and the snow. Um, so five coats of polyurethane or something else that's going to really seal it and keep it uh, uh, protected while it's outside or else it's going to warp. Um, as far as the knots, like you can see I came down from the tree, I looped it under the swing, and then I tied knots here and here. You want knots that aren't going to slide down. So I did a couple hitches where I wrapped it around the rope, and then I brought it up to here. And I actually used some tape and some rope to secure it so it wouldn't slide down. I originally wanted to do that technique where you can braid the rope inside the, uh, the rope so it cinches on itself, but I didn't have the tool. And this really wasn't good enough rope to do that. Now as far as how to tie the knots up at the top of the tree, there's a couple different things you could do and I actually recorded a video on that back when I tied it in the spring. Alright, here I am up on top of the tree and I wanted to point out the knots I used. Um, this is the first knot I tied and I did a round turn and two half hitches and the theory was on it that the rope coming down is basically going straight up and over. The rope wrapping around is this one here. So there's no real pinch points in this rope. I'm not kinking it or bending it anywhere where it's going to be pulling and at a right angle. It's coming straight down, this rope, wrapped around twice. And then it comes over to this side where I have it wrapped around twice again. And I just uh, wrapped it through the line. So as it pulls, it's, pull it's tightening on itself. And again, there's no pinch points in the rope, the force coming down. Um, I used carpet padding on the top just so if it does rub or wear, hopefully it doesn't, it won't be rubbing on the tree and rub through the rope. But that was the theory I had on no pinch points on the knots I'm tying. Some people said do a bowline or something like that. I needed it to be tight to the tree, which a bowline wouldn't really do. It would sag down. That works if you have an eyelet through the tree or something like that. I want it tight to the branch, and these are both tight to the branch. Now as far as what trees to use, uh, we have a lot of trees on our property, but um, not a lot of good trees for swings. We have pine trees, which don't work, and some big cottonwoods. And now, cottonwoods are a softwood, and ideally you don't want to use a softwood because those branches can just snap and break. I would much rather trust an oak or a maple over a cottonwood. So we had to go with this one. I think it's a a type of locust. The, seed, the leaves are nice and small like a honey locust and it seemed like a really strong tree and we have a good branch sticking out at the top. 
And the last little thing I did was I took a wood burner and I burned uh, my son's name on the front of the swing and the year on the back. Just something to personalize it a little bit more. Hopefully it stays here for a bunch of years. Well, I hope you liked the video you just watched. If you did, feel free to subscribe by clicking the button on this side. You can also check out all the videos I've done, um, the playlist from things I've built, things I've fixed, home repair, 3D printing. And on this side, you can check out a recommended video similar to the one you just watched. And as always, down in the description, I'll put a link to my blog, which has more pictures and more information about the video you just watched. Thanks.